Jerry read these verses from our, yeah, Jerry read these verses from uh, Job chapter one verses nine through twelve, and uh, I just want to to ask the question: Is God really in control of our lives? And as we look at Job, and I'm not going to be looking at these verses that. Uh, were read for us, but I just want to use Job's life as an example of how God worked in his life. And I believe uh, it's vital for us to realize the truth that God cares about each one of us. It doesn't matter what we're going through, God knows about it, and he cares about each one of us especially as believers. He cares about everybody, but he cares what we're going through in our different struggles and trials that we go through. And as we think about Job, and for those of us who know the story there, um, he went through far more than any of us have ever gone through or ever any of us will ever have gone through, but God was with him in all those that he went through there. So I just want to begin this morning by looking at the hedged. Who are the hedged? That's us as believers. God has put a hedge around each one of us, and I'm thankful that he has. Uh, Second Chronicles 16.9 says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong and on behalf of his of those whose heart is loved loyal. is loyal to him i'm sorry yeah is loyal to him god's watching us he's watching everything that we do we might when we go to sleep at night we might think well maybe god doesn't know but uh, he's keeping an eye on us day and night and i'm thankful that he does even though sometimes maybe when we do things we shouldn't be, we wished he wasn't watching, but I'm glad that he is. But he's put a hedge around us to protect us. And if you know the story of Job, you see that there uh, in that hedge that God put around him. Wherever we uh, may be, all of God's creation is there. He put a hedge around us to protect us, and I'm thankful for that. I'm glad that even though we're there, there are people who are unsaved, God still loves them and has died on the cross for them. But for those who are saved, they're special to God. And the Israelites, uh, there's a verse that says that they're the apple of his eye. And I believe that's true today. And what we're talking about this morning is just as true today as it was way back then. And I feel sorry for those people who are poking God in the eye, so to speak, because there's, there's going to be a great deal of difficulty for them. But God is constantly on the lookout for opportunities to show himself real on our behalf. And I, you know, we, we can see that in our lives. Can't we see that God's showing himself real in our lives? If we can't, I think there's a problem there somewhere because he wants to work. We have to allow him to work, but he wants to work in each of our lives. And as these different difficulties and different trials and things that come into our life, God is there to help us. He's there to protect us. And I believe if we didn't have that hedge around us, Satan would love to have a, hey, a heyday with us just like he did wanted to do with Job, and actually, he got to have, a, uh, he got to do a lot of things to Job. God said, "You can do everything you want to Job, except take his life." And if you know the story, you know that Job, uh, Satan did an awful lot of things to Job that none of us here have ever experienced. But God had that hedge around him, and He puts. I believe He has a hedge around us too to protect us from Satan doing a lot of the things that he would love to do to us. And I'm thankful for that because if it wouldn't be for that hedge around us, uh, we'd all be 
in trouble. Prerequisite that we have to be one of God's children to have that hedge put around us. An unsaved person doesn't have that hedge, but a saved person has the hedge that God has put around them. Psalm 34, 7 says, The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and, and delivers them. Who fears him, who fear him and delivers him. That angel of the Lord has put a, a wall around each one of us that are belong to him. The prerequisite for that hedge of a wall around us is that we fear God, that we trust God and look to him for his daily guidance day by day. You know, unless one fears the Lord and is loved, loyal to him, he's not going to have that hedge around us. If we don't want a hedge around us, if we don't want to be protected by him, then he's not going to do it. But keep in mind that only those who are part of God's family experience God's hedge around us. Have you ever felt like you've gone through something and uh, or, or maybe could go through something and it didn't happen? I think so often we... we uh, Think about things that don't happen that really could happen. And I'm glad that God has a hedge around us. That's the people that are he that are hedged. Uh, and then how about the hedge? And I just have a few different things listed down here. So what are some of the hedges God puts around his children? First of all, the angel of the Lord is a hedge that God's children has. Scripture talks about the angel of the Lord. When it talks about the angel of the Lord, it's talking about Jesus himself. Throughout the Old Testament, we see numerous instances where it says the angel of the Lord. And that's when that activity happened. That's Jesus. That is the one who is the angel of the Lord. He's Throughout the Old Testament, he's been there. Throughout the New Testament, he's there working. Today, he's at work. He's protecting and helping and guarding us. He puts the hedge out there. You know, I nothing can sneak up on us if God is working there with us and, and putting that hedge around us. I was thinking of years ago, Jerry will remember this and Virginia will, Jim Sherwood used to be the janitor over here at the elementary school. And I can remember these kids in their middle teens probably trying to sneak up on Jim. And he had a little dog, kind of like Winnie. He had a little dog there. And they it was impossible for them to sneak up on Jim. And Jim didn't mind. He was He was okay with it, knowing that they weren't going to do anything to him. They just were having fun. And that little dog always gave him away. You could never never sneak up on, on Jim when he was there. And that's the way the Lord is, I believe, with us. We have that hedge around us, and we have that angel of the Lord protecting us if we belong to him. And then we see the circle of mountains. Psalm 125.2 says, Go ahead. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forever. Okay, the point being that mountains are a great means of protection. Israel was, or Jerusalem was up on the mountain there on the higher part, but uh, mountains are a means of protection, and I'm thankful for that. And it's a wall of fire. Uh, Zechariah 2, 5 says, for, for I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire, will be a wall of fire 
all around the you know fire a wall of fire stops somebody from coming through a ring of fire you can get through that but a wall of fire uh, just and some of you are more familiar with that than others of us when we had the forest fire here and just the the force of it it was something that uh, is unbelievable really but there I believe there's a difference between a ring of fire and a wall of fire How come our papers stick together when you're trying to air this? Okay. So we have the angel of the Lord as a protector, the mountains as a protector, and then God's presence as a protection. You know, in some bib biblical examples of God's hedge being placed around his children, uh, I think we see them. Noah was one. For 100, over 100 years, he worked building the ark, and I believe God was they're protecting him and helping him in that situation. Uh, David was another one, or Daniel, I mean, in the lion's den. God had a, a wall of protection, I guess you would say. He was there protecting Daniel so he didn't get eaten. Uh, the three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace, God was there protecting them as well, too. And then we've got in the New Testament we have Paul and Silas and uh, Peter all saw God, God's presence in their prison experience. In God's presence, uh, God's wings. Listen to what God, God's hedge as Jerry reads Psalm 91, 1 through 11. And just listen to all the different ways that God puts a hedge around these people, around his believers, his children. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Surely He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence well that's hard to say uh, he shall he shall cover you with with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge his truth shall be your shield and buckler you shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day nor of the pestilence that walks in the darkness nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes you shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Let's see, how far am I going? Through eleven. Through eleven, okay. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, uh, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near you, uh, come near your dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways okay did you pick up on some of the ways in which he has a hedge around us that he's protecting us and watching over us uh, boy I, I would encourage us to go back and just look at these verses again throughout the week maybe and when we're going through a difficult time what do we do? Take it to God and allow God to help us in these difficult times. Dolly, you look like you're going to say something. Yes, that looks over my bedroom all the time. I guess that is on my mirror. Good for you. <laughs> okay. Good for you. Good. Great. Uh, God cares about his children. He really does. And he's going to do everything he can to keep Satan from attacking us and yet Satan does everything he can and he can only do Satan can only do what God allows him to do just like with the story of Job God said okay you can do anything you want to but you can't take Job's life 
And so we know what all Job went through. He lost his family. He lost his his uh, flocks, and and uh, the only thing he didn't lose lose is his wife that said, "Curse God and die." Uh, maybe he should have lost her too, but he didn't. But anyway, uh, God cares about each one of us, and He especially cares about. Well, he cared about Job, and he cares about us. It doesn't matter what little thing you're going through or what great big thing you're going through, God cares. If you belong to him, God cares, and he will enable you to get through that. I have a friend right now, actually he's Virginia's second cousin, who has found out that he has cancer, and this Wednesday he's going to have whatever test it is to find out if it's gotten into his bones you know would you say that was a, a, a problem but I'm glad that he's a Christian and I'm glad that he knows that God is with him whether he lives or dies uh, God is with him and I'm thankful for that something the Old Testament saints didn't have was the Holy Spirit. The Old Testament didn't Old Testament saints did not have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came on them at different times to do different things. But as believers we have the Holy Spirit living in us. If we are if we're a believer, the Holy Spirit lives within us. So we have the the angel of the Lord, the the circle of mountains, a wall of fire, God's presence, God's wings, and then we have our armor, Romans, all right, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Do you want to read that, Jerry? you have it? That's fine, yes. Ephesians 6, 10 to 18 says this, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which uh, you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. Did you put your armor on this morning? Not armor all, armor on. <laughs> I remember uh, hearing that Warren Wiersbe said that each morning he puts on the armor. We need it, don't we? If we don't have our armor on, then Satan can make those tacks uh, get get to us but I'm glad that God protects us from that I want to have Jerry read 1 Corinthians 10 13 from the Amplified Bible and it just listen to it as it explains more what it says there in 1 Corinthians 10 13 it's long so be ready <laughs> for no temptation no trial regarded as enticing to sin, no matter how it comes or where it leads, has overtaken you and laid hold on you that is not common to men. That is, no temptation or trial has come to you that is beyond human resistance and that is not adjusted or, and adapted and belonging to human experience such as man can bear. But God is faithful to his word and to his compassionate nature, and he can be trusted not to let you be tempted and tried and assayed beyond your ability and strength of resistance and power 
to uh, to endure, but with the temptation will always uh, also provide you uh, provide the way out, the means of escape to a landing place that you may be capable and strong and powerful patiently to bear up under it. Memorize it out of the King James and then read that. <laughs> I was just going to say I wouldn't recommend you try to learn it from the Amplified, but it does it does enlighten or, or add to an awful lot of the 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 different ways in which God is there to protect us, and I'm glad that we have that help from Him. That no temptation has taken us, overtaken us, but such is common to man. Anything that we go through, other people have gone through it as well. But it says, he, sa he says, with the temptation, he'll make a way of escape. So if, if we're tempted to do something or even a test, whatever you refer to it there as, God makes a way, God helps us in that difficult situation. Dolly, I was thinking of you. Can I use you as an illustration? Dolly has been in need of a new vehicle for quite some time now. And would you say that's a test? You know, having to just stay in town with her old vehicle because she couldn't go out of town with it. And it came a point in time when it, the vehicle said, that's it, I'm done, I'm not going any further. <laughs> And so the last couple of weeks or so, I think, she's been getting rides to church, and uh, that now she's got a, a nice, new, shiny, red Dodge pickup sitting out there. Through all this trial and struggle and, and difficulty, I don't think Dolly said, I know she didn't say, God, I need a new pickup, or I need a new vehicle, and you're not supplying it, so forget you. I'm not having anything to do with you because you're not helping me. God works in his own time. And the same is true for any of us. God does, when we have a need, God is there to help us. It may not be right when we want it, but it will be when he allows it. And then I think of, of, the, of the hedge. We have the hedge and who it is and then the different things about it, and then we have the hedger, and that's, of course, the Lord himself. And I believe that the hedger is made up of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All three of these are an active force working in our lives to help us, to stand strong, to help us to do what God wants for us to do, to come out victorious, no matter what the struggle is. Each one does his part in seeing that we come to Christ and then grow in our walk with Christ. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that all three have a part. Exodus 14, 14 says, The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. You know, I was, I was thinking about Israel in with, with regards to this. And I wonder, <laughs> I just wonder what would happen if, if Israel's leadership said, we're not doing anything else, we're leaving it up to God. I don't know, it would be interesting to see what would happen. Uh, I, believe, I believe God uses us when and where he can. And he's using Israel in ways that he can. But it was just a thought that uh, he'll fight for us. All we have to do is hold our peace. You know, Second uh, Chronicles 32, 7 and 8. Do you have that one? Yep. Okay. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid nor dismayed before the king of Assyria, nor before the, all the multitude that is with him, for there are more with us than with him. With him is an army of flesh, but with us is the, is the Lord, our God, to help 
us and, and to fight our battles. And all the people were strengthened by the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. Okay, it doesn't matter how big the crowd is against us out here. If we have God on our side, we have all that we need, don't we? Him working in and through us to help protect us, to get us through whatever situation we face. And I'm so thankful for that. Have you ever felt like there's a, a heavy, dark, black cloud coming in, so to speak, on us, and it just seems like there's no way out, that we, we, we're in trouble, we can't, we can't get loose from it. Do not be dismayed, God is there to help us. Um, with God there to help us, does that mean our life is going to be just one of ease and, and a bed of roses and things like this? Not at all. It doesn't, it doesn't even begin to imply that. God is there to help us. Satan's going to attack us and, and do all he can to hinder our walk. He can't take away our salvation. I don't believe he can do that. But he can sure try his best to hinder our walk with the Lord. And at times that can be pretty pretty difficult. But I'm glad that God is there to help us through those times. He can, he's our shield, our protector. And we have him to help us through those difficult times through the fiery trials and uh, there was a, a song I was thinking of and I didn't write it down and I don't remember what it was now but some of you may remember Maydell and her favorite song we sung it almost every Sunday night be not dismayed whatever betide God will take care of you and uh, the other one I was thinking of was living by faith. I care not today what tomorrow may bring, sunshine or something in rain. I know my God rules over everything, and all of my worry is so important. No, all of my worry is vain. Casting all our care upon Him. Why? Because He cares for us. That's the kind of God we have. If you're here this morning and you're saved, you have that God that cares about you. And we can cast any of our cares on him, knowing that he cares more than we do. And it is, it is not a secret to him. Um, he knows already, he knew from the beginning of the foundation of the world that we'd be sitting here this morning. He knew from the beginning of the world the different difficulties that we're going through. And I'm glad that he does know those different things. Job 1, 22 says, Sin, nor, char nor charge God with, with wrong. God, no, all that went Job, Job went through, and, you, and I, I hope you know what he went, some of the things that he went through that's listed there for us. But in all of that, Job didn't turn his back on God. God was with him. And God, even though I, I believe Job didn't, realize that but God protected him from Satan taking his life and the same is true for us we're not going to die a minute too soon or a minute too late but God will do what he pleases with us if we're part of him uh, Revelation I think it's chapter 4 verse 11 or 11 4 says that we're created for his pleasure to do the things that he wants us to do but we have to be open and willing to do that. So I would just challenge each one of us, myself included, to listen to God, to do what God wants for us to do, and see how it turns out. I know it's going to turn out okay. If God be for us, who can be against us? That's what Scripture says. And if we believe it, then let's put it into practice. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for who you are, and I thank you for watching over Job the way you did, and all the things that he went through, things that here we will never experience all the things at once, maybe some of the things at different times, but not all at once. 
And I just thank you that you care about your children more than anything else, and you only want what's best for us, and you will do what we need. You'll protect us from the fiery darts of the, of the devil, it's, it, it says there. All we have to do is trust you, and that's easy to say, more difficult to do when we're going through a horrendous storm, but I thank you that you're there, just like Jerry in the Sunday school class this morning when the disciples were rowing across the boat, across the river, on the, the lake, and the waves became outrageous, outrageous, Jesus showed up. The same is true for us, and I thank you for that. Thank you for who you are, that you care about each one of us. Bless us this week as we look to you and walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen.